Yo, what is going on today, guys? It is Sam, better known as Samito, coming at you guys with the ultimate Echo Guide, the secrets that you need to know. Uh, so let's get right into the action, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Let's check it out. Today's video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. These guys are best of breed when it comes to mobile gaming. I mean, you guys have seen me do some integrations with them in the past. I'm sure you've seen tons of them on the internet for honestly the right reasons. I mean, it's a good sign because the product is actually really good. They bolster 80 million plus users on their free-to-play mobile game. A lot of fun champions, and what really surprised me about Raid is, you know, usually with games like that, the, the game mechanics don't feel rewarding, but when I played Raid, I actually felt pretty adequately rewarded for what I was doing. I mean, I usually just sit on my bed and, uh, and you know, on my phone and, and just play for fun, especially after a long day of Overwatch or Warzone or a shooter game that can get really frustrating and unfun and really just ruin your mood. You know, Raid kind of brought my mood back, and it, it felt rewarding to play, so I got to give the devs credit. They've done a good job there. Um, and I actually have some gifts for you guys, so if you use my code down in the description, you get the new champion, say, Rel, 200k silver, I think 50 gems, and some ancient shards as well. So, ton of good stuff. And to top it off, you guys may not know that MMA and pro wrestling star Ronda Rousey has made an exciting jump into Raid, which means she's going to have her own champion. So, it's going to be freaking sweet. You guys can actually get it. Everything you need is going to be down in the description. So, be sure to click on it, guys. Thank you so much. Let's get right into the guide. Here we go. Let's start off with the most important thing, and that's the settings for Echo. This setting right here, hold for flight. You want that setting on because it's easier to use this flight boost tech, which allows you to get more velocity going forward and lets your cooldown come back about 50% faster because instead of flying like this everywhere, right, it's way easier to get the flight boost and have the velocity carry you over there instead. So I landed here and my cooldown was six seconds, but if I go like this when I land, my cooldown's at about three seconds. So you about double your mobility and allows you to go for explosive assassinations like the one I'm about to show you right now. Is over. Restoring health systems. I thought I'd kill. Oh. 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 oh, I'm crazy. Oh my god, I'm crazy. Oh my god, I'm fucking crazy. Oh my god, I'm fucking nuts. Oh my god, I'm fucking nuts. So that's setting number one. Let's talk a little bit about cooldowns and what you want to do as Echo. Generally, you want to be flying around and looking for stickies on opponents, right? I like opening up with my stickies because it gets targets low, and then when you get a target to half HP, you want to use your focusing beam, which does, I think normally it's like 50 damage per second or something like that. It's a very low number, but when a target is under half health, it does 175 damage a second, right? You can really set up some crazy burst potential. So I like to kind of fly on these off angles, look for stickies, or use my normal shots to then set up my beam. And since my stickies and my flight are both on a six, six second cooldown and my uh, focusing beam is on an eight second cooldown, you want to use those abilities first to try to set up the beam, go for those constant rotations and movement around the map, try to tag people and look for a quick burst kill on them. Let's talk about assassination techniques. I have a couple of my favorites. My, my best one is the vertical assassination technique, especially in low ranks. You can use your flight to go very, very high and very close to walls, right? And try to drop right on a target and use your stickies as you fall down and kill them with your beam before they know what's happened. What's so good about this is if you go up really high, you can actually glide and hold your spacing. So by the time you land, your flight is already back. So I land, go for the kill, get the kill, and I'm already back out of the fight again. Uh, we're gonna go up really, really high here again. They don't usually look up here. We're gonna wait. My flight cooldown's coming back. Moira's coming out. He thinks it's safe. I'm waiting, 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 waiting. He's one. I forced the drone. Okay, aside from assassination techniques, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the Goldilocks zone, is what I like to call it, where you wanna fly as Echo. So. There's a do and don't for Echo. You either want to be like right in their grill to beam range, like about this far away, or really far away and not in between those two points, right? And the reason for that is if you are, say, flying here and their hit scan is here, which is out of your beam range, right? You have to drop all the way down. This is probably about like a 20 meter drop, right? Well, they can shoot you. So it'd be better if you were in their fall off range, aside from Widowmaker, way back here to where you can drop without getting punished as easily. So you either need to be right up in their grill where you can quickly fly up like this and look for a beam kill and then drop back, or 
way in the back over here. If you're in between those two ranges, right, there's a little bit of a zone where it's just kind of a kill box for you because it's so far for you to get to cover. The only way that you want to be up close, really, like, right around here is if you have something that you can hide behind, right? And it's a very tricky concept, but I'm going to have footage kind of talking about this. I'm going to put one clip right now, and then I'm going to be talking about how you need to play in a full live reaction game that you're going to see here in a second. Last but not least, that leaves copy. I'm going to talk to you guys about what heroes are good to copy and which ones are not, okay? Especially with the copy change, it's really important to understand that the ultimate is just kind of weak, right? Copying tanks actually is kind of bad now. They really, really gutted it all together. So, D.Va can be a good copy, but you need to have a ton of resources. Doom is okay. He kind of lacks damage. Junger Queen is good because you have shout and, like, means to engage on people with self-regen, right? Arissa is alright, but she lacks finishing power. Ram can be good if you have a pocket or you're using it in Kitsune to build the ult quickly and you have on-the-ground targets to overwhelm. Ryan is bad, don't do that. Hog is bad, he doesn't have enough health. Sig can be good because you have the grasp and his shield. Winston is good if you get primal. You have to land your first jump on multiple targets or you're not going to get primal in time. If you get the primal off, it's very good. Ball... So, so, like, if you can get minefields off on point, then you're okay, but, you know, it's, there's definitely better heroes than Ball, but he's definitely so, so, and Zarya can be good because she has her bubbles, as long as you can get high charge quickly, you should be able to do fine. Now, DPS, Ash is good because you can build a quick bomb. Bastion, I don't find to be that good because he doesn't have self-sustain or very great damage. Cass, doesn't have much sustain, but, like, can be good if you have a lot of on-the-ground presence. I wouldn't recommend copying Cass in a fight that you're losing, though. Obviously, you can't copy Echo. Genji can be good. Blade's a little weak, but I like using Genji as an extra set of cooldowns, which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit after I go through which heroes are good to copy and which ones aren't. Hanzo is bad, obviously. Junkrat is okay. You do get two quick mines. Mei is pretty good because you have self-sustain and Blizzard can do a lot of damage. Um, Farah is great because it's easy to build barrage. You have mobility and you don't have any risk when barraging because you have your second life. You can just get right back out. Reaper is very good because you can teleport into a team if you need to. You have Wraith Form, and Death Blossom is great at cleaning up fights. And because you use it in copy form, you know, it, you don't have that much risk. Sojourn, well, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna answer that. I think everyone knows the answer. Um, <laughs> Soldier is okay. He doesn't have mobility options, so I think it's mediocre. Sombra is really, really good. EMP builds super fast. You can go invisible. You can hack targets. You actually can get multiple EMPs in one fight if you want to, and I just think it's very strong. Sim is not that great. It takes a little bit of time to ramp up her beam, and the wall won't last her much longer in the time it takes for you to build the ult. Torbjorn is okay. Not that great, but you can copy him if you need to. Tracer is great because you can build pulse up fast, and again, she has a lot of self-sustain. You can play solo as Tracer and get value, which is what makes it so good. Widow is only... I actually think copying Widow is good for this reason. Like, on some maps where the Widow just sits across the map, you can fly straight at her, copy her, and win the Widow duel. I've done that many times solely to eliminate the Widowmaker on the other team who's holding you hostage. Um, but it's definitely not one of the better ones, but, like, it, there is a use for it if there's a Widow sitting in Narnia that you can't deal with without copying, right? Um, Ana is alright. It's situational. Like, if you're down to support copying, Ana can be very good to build the Nano fast, get a big nade off, get a big sleep. I like doing it. BAP is very good because building window is very easy. You can do a lot of damage and self-sustain with drone, and window comes up very fast. Brig is meh. Kiriko is also meh. Like, I struggle to build Kitsune in time, and it goes away really quickly, but if you hit the headshots, it can be good. It's good for maintaining your team, especially if you're down to support. Copying Kiriko is absolutely not a bad thing, especially if you need to pocket your tank. Same goes for Lucio. You can build that beat up if you need to. Mercy is meh. If you're down a player, you can copy the Mercy and res your teammate, which I do sometimes, but it's very situational. Uh, Moira is one of the best copies in the game. You can put out tons of healing as well as damage with Coalescence. You put out enormous stats, and I actually think copying Moira is very good. Zen, kind of mediocre. I don't think he's that good because you can't go on the offense while in Trank. So, I don't think Zenyatta is that great of a copy. But now I'm going to talk a little bit about what you need to be doing with copy and what makes it valuable. 
So the best way to use copy is, is just to kind of get an extra set of cooldowns. I like to dive a target first, force their cooldowns, try to kill them, and then pop copy to have a fresh set of cooldowns while they don't have one. Copy is not a big value utility ultimate anymore. It used to be in Overwatch 1 when you could copy a tank, but now it really just lost that power. And uh, just the most important thing is just be sure to not just ego duel with it. Like you're not invincible in copy. You have to play reserved, you have to play smart, and it's not something you can just int with. So please don't int with copy. Use it to force their cooldowns first, copy and punish them quickly while they don't have their cooldowns in time. All right, here we go. So, I'm really going to be hammering home the Goldilocks zone. I hope they have a Widow. I can't believe I'm saying that because it's going to be harder. Ram, Genji, Mercy, right? Now, we're gonna, the first thing we're going to do is scout it out. There's a flanking Zen. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right, so let's go hit a flank here. They do have an Ash. We're going to try to blindside the Genji. That's the vertical assassination I talked about. We almost got him. I'm not sure what he's doing there. I'm not going to get help from Ayana, which is great. But we, we that was a great look from us. You want to do exactly what I just did right there. That was a nice look on their ram to pull me down. But we want to commit on those at all times. Because usually we'll get the help that we need to actually finish that off. But did you see how the Genji didn't see me? Because I went above him, right? So we're going to look to do that again. We're going to go high, especially against the ram. I'm going to ignore this Genji. I'm going to go for this guy first. I can't a shot. Oh, my goodness. Pull him up. Get him low. There's the Genji behind. He's going to go that way. I'm going to dash out to the side. Back off. And again, I'm using the verticality of my flight. They made the swap over to Soldier. We've killed two. Soldier's probably going to be here. She's going to try to res. I think I just denied that. Not sure. She's... I shouldn't look here. Wait. How did I just get one shot? Did he just dash at me? He did. Okay. He did. My honest is playing very passive, too, so we're going to have to be careful here. We're going to look to beam him, especially with the Discord. We're going to watch, again, right up at the Soldier's Grill. He's going to get out, and I'm going to stay high, because I think he's going to repeat it. Ready? Yeah, there he is. And that's quick stealth. Boom. He's dead before he knows what happened. And that's the power of verticality, guys. If you want to utilize Echo to her max potential. I'm going to go up here, Widow, up here. Uh, I missed my sticky. Drop it back. They're gonna res the Zen. I might be in trouble here. Oh, no, no, that. I should have waited. I know the widow's here. So again, remember, Goldilocks zone. You either want to be right on them. We're gonna copy now as he is. He's gonna have to run. We're gonna have the mercy next. Pop visor last. And now we're good. And that's kind of again what you really want to use copy for. It's just that extra set of cooldowns, guys. I go in, I force Biofield, I, I predict when he's going to Helix, dupe, become invulnerable, and then look for the kill. So, again, we're going to have to play Echo pretty perfectly, so I know the Widow's over here. I'm high. Catching him off guard, surfing on the roof. Uh, almost got him. And again, see how I'm surfing up here and canceling my flight and waiting? Right? Look, it's already back by the time I land. He's going to be here. Right on him, I might be. Deny it. We're gonna have to run. I think that Mercy's gonna be able to res. I can't stop that, but I'm actually just gonna wrap around. And now we're gonna hide here. But I'm stuck behind them and they don't have res. She's gonna grapple out. Ready? I'm gonna go this way for it. Hopefully, I did not get pinged there. Go right at him again and then beam him straight down. I think I'm. Oh, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm just gonna sneak right past him. Hide here. Wait for my flight to come back. Oh, she's one shot. I got him. Nice. So it's a good trade. I mean, we already lost the fight, but do you guys see the rhythm? Like, I'm bursting at this Widow as fast as I can. And it's hard to do, but you can get used to it, right? I'm bursting at him as fast as I can. If I don't have my beam, I'm backing off. I'm surfing on rooftops and utilizing the verticality of the map at all times. There's no point in playing Echo if you're not willing to use the upper parts of the map. So let's see. We're going to try to walk it up here again. That's the soldier. He's going to be low. Be careful, and I'm backing. See, I'm not in that middle range. I'm no. on, when I realize I can't, when I realize I can't get there, I'm already backing to stay in that, like out of that dead zone and in the Goldilocks zone. Ready? Ready? Watch. He's got no idea. Then I'm here. We forced the trank. Worth it. We're gonna go over the top again. We'll look for mercy first. Oh, I thought you were gonna die. 
And again, right in his face. There's... We're, oh, shit. We're, we're, Oh no. Oh no. Not good. Not good. So close, dude. So close. So she, I had her one. I wanted to copy the ram there, not the soldier. And we're gonna wait here again. We're actually playing this really well. Uh, Martina's just kind of tossing, so that's fine. Staying high. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Surfing, surfing. Somebody's gonna be here. They've been going here all day. Of course, he took our height away from us, so we're gonna go up. And I, there's a Zen. He's gonna be low. It's too late for you now, pal. He's gonna die. They're gonna visor soon. They're, they're, they're gonna have overclock. I need to go get Tester, so that's what we're gonna do. Drop immediately after this explodes. I'm just tagging the Mercy. She doesn't regen. I kind of mess up that cycle. I use my beam to get the kill there. And again, Sojourn's just really OP right now. So once I commit there, it's fine. But as long as I get the kill on the Mercy, just they can't res. We get the cap. We're good to go. So again, building copy very slow. They've got a very anti-echo comp. Ram can pull me down. Zen can discord me, right? Soldier, Sojourn. Our heroes, right? So we have to play it perfectly positionally. Right now, we're starting far back because the card's not up there yet. I don't benefit from the hard dive. I want to see if any of them are actually up top here. Soldier is still behind. Let's think about the Mercy first. And we'll just quickly hop right out. That's that flight boost deck, right? Kill the Mercy first so the res can't come through. And he's still chasing me. We're going to fly back up this way. My Ana should be able to heal me up right here. Okay, well, now we're good. Who's still alive? Dents here. Gonna use Trank, and I'm just gonna wait on top now. I don't need to force a bad duel. My Ana's probably gonna die. We're listening, we're listening, we're listening. Probably gonna die there. Oh my. Shake and make action. It's not gonna be enough, though. Unfortunately, they ram ulted, my team got farmed, nothing you can do. But the good news is, you see how I'm splitting them off? And even then, I'm going one for one. I'm hiding close and exploding out on them the second they come out. I'm either right in their grill, where I can immediately blow them to smithereens, or I'm really far away. There's no real in-between on this play. And that's the key. Too many of the players play on the in-between. Now, since they've swapped to hog instead, now I can play way better poke. Right, because they have no shield. I'm gonna... She's still here. And I'm just incident, unfortunately. Yeah, we already lost our Arisa. We didn't use our Nano on the way in. And the soldier just able to contest the high ground. Unfortunately, I just rotated on her on the wrong times. Like, if I was there a little bit earlier, we would have been fine. Um, but I was just, like, it was very unfortunate timing and, and bad on the contest there where she was up there. I didn't have my flight cool down. So I was just, I was trying to see our ult economy there. There's Zen's frontlining really hard, which means we can farm him when he does that. But yeah, so we have Nano, we have Copy, we have Arissa ult. Not sure if they have Trank. Probably should have paid attention there. My Arissa got hooked. We're staggering. Which is not great. We Nanoed our Arissa, actually. That, that, that's, oh, we Nanoed our Widow. Oh. Oh my god. So listen. I might kill him actually. He's very low. I mean, that didn't hit him. I'm gonna have to copy pretty early here, but I'm pushing for free here. I'm gonna kill the mercy on the way out. Go for the Zen next. And there he goes. I see my other teammate on him. And look at my movement. I'm hard committing side to side. I'm not gonna copy the hog. I think copying the soldier on the high ground might not be a bad idea here. Might not be a bad idea. Copying the hog is, is not going to be good, especially after his nerf. Actually, hog is a very bad copy now. So we're going to copy the soldier because we're already set up on the high ground. I need him to peek me. Come on, pal. Peek me. Peek me here. Peek me here, buddy. Kill the Zen. Now we're going to push this in. We're going to hammer this one off. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get healed. Full beam the hog. Soldier's in the game. We shake and bake, go for the Mercy next, and that's gonna do the trick. 
And again, we played the Goldilocks zone so well on a map where you have to play it well. And I really want you guys to take that's the most important thing about Echo, in my opinion. The mechanics come over time, but if you don't set yourself up right in the Goldilocks zone, which is like, you're, you're like the bread of a sandwich. You don't want to be in the middle of a sandwich. You want to be the bread. All right. And as you can see, with Echo Copy just forcing these off angles, this is kind of what you do. So I hope you guys learned something. Click that sub button if you're new. And let me know in the comments what hero you'd like to see next. Hope you guys learned something. You got questions, I'll answer them down below. And I'll see y'all later. Peace out.